Okay, so again, this kind of one, two, three, this is what our children are exposed to. And then when you, you know, when you add in, there's another element we really could add in. Let's, let's make a little room here. Uh, and that's, we'll call it up here. We'll put it up here. Number four, that's screen time. A lot of these babies, parents are putting iPads in their hands. Parents are putting devices in their hands. And so they're being bombarded um, with indoor time. In essence, they're basically being trained to become addicted to computers and to technology. And so what this has actually been shown to do is this reduces outdoor activity. Now, why is that important? When we reduce act outdoor activity, we reduce our exposure to microbes. We reduce our exposure to sunshine. We reduce our overall physical stature. And so with that, we get kids that are muscle atrophied, right? They're not active. And when you're not active, remember what, why is it important to be physically active is one of the reasons why is your muscles are a pumping mechanism for your lymphatic system. This is how your body drains and detoxifies. So if you're physically inactive, if we're teaching these kids to stay on computer screens and not have physical activity, we're basically with all these toxins we're pumping into them, we're not giving them the physical capacity to detox from them. But then when we take away microbes and we take away sunshine, we know that vitamin D deficiency is one of the triggers for asthma. Okay, we talk about nutritional deficiencies. You got it right here. We'll get to that in just a minute. So vitamin D deficiency from lack of sunshine, but then reduction in exposure to microbes over time. Well, why is that important? Because bacteria are important. There's a, a field of medicine um, that we, we've all probably heard of this, this, this theory called uh, the germ theory of disease, right? The germ theory, meaning that the germs, move this over a little bit more, germs, we've all heard it, cause disease. This is partially true and partially untrue. Germs don't really cause disease. It's more like host imbalance. What is what I mean by host? Host is you. You are the host. Your body is the host. Host imbalance and really immune balance. Host immune imbalance is what actually causes the disease. The germ can be a kind of a contributing factor. And, and here's what I mean by that. If I took a thousand babies and swabbed their throats and we would find, inevitably, we would find staph, we would find strep in these children. But in the vast majority of these babies, if we, we could take a thousand healthy babies, we wouldn't, we wouldn't see an infection, even though the bacteria that sets the stage for the infection would be present. So again, the germ itself, the presence of the germ doesn't dictate or guarantee the presence of the illness or the disease. Remember, germs take advantage of a weakened host immune system. And so again, we don't necessarily blame the germs. And this, this right here, host imbalance, this is referred to in science as terrain theory. So germ theory versus terrain theory. Terrain means the, the terrain of the health of your body is more important than whether or not a germ is present. Okay. And we also have another very compelling theory in medicine that's making headway. It's called the hygiene hypothesis, meaning that humans today are too clean. If you're too clean, if you live in an environment that's sterile and too clean, um, let me give you, an, you know, we always talk about your body works on this premise of use it or lose it. So when your body doesn't ever get trained to fight external microbes and allergens and things of that nature, your immune system never gets trained. It never actually gets to exercise. So just like your body's not exercising, right? Your physical stature when you don't go outside, if you're living in this really hyper hygienic environment, your immune system also atrophies. It gets weak as a result of not being exposed. And so what we're learning is that the cleaner people are, the more they tend to develop autoimmune disease. The dirtier people are, the more they tend to develop infection. So there's this kind of, think of it as almost like a scale. If we're too clean, It increases our risk for autoimmune disease. 
if we're too dirty, it increases our risk for infectious disease. Now, in life, it, it always really boils back down to balance. So if we look, look at this as, as a scale, or you remember the teeter-totter when you were a little kid, and you had you know, Johnny on one end and, and Billy on the other end, right? And so they're sitting on that teeter-totter. Forgive my art, I'm a terrible artist. It wasn't my accelerating point in school. Uh, but these kids are on this teeter-totter. And, and so think of these kids as, as the right balance between dirty and clean. Okay, so they both wash their hands. They both get outside and play. Neither one of them are in super sterile environments. There's just that right balance. Then there's a balance when they get on that teeter-totter. They're, they're going to be able to have a good time. But if there's an imbalance, let's say that Billy over here is 50 pounds overweight, then what's going to happen is little Johnny on the other side is going to have his feet dangling, right? So we're going to have a, 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 a kid that's got their feet dangling off. That's imbalance, right? And so this kid's going to really, really struggle. Um, so again, it's a balance between clean. It's a balance between dirty. And so what we're finding out is that you, if, you, if you wash too much, you can actually overdo it and you can increase the risk or the prevalence for autoimmune development. I mean, understand this, infectious disease at the turn of the 19th century, so in the early 1900s, one of the biggest causes of mortality and death was infection, was disease. But what happened? Historically, what happened, let's, let's make some room here. Historically, what happened is we started to, the government started to develop systems to clean the water to check the food. So we, we had, basically we had checks and balance systems to make sure that we weren't getting exposure to dirty water or to dirty food. But even more importantly, one of the biggest impacts was indoor plumbing. Indoor plumbing, it was these changes that led to the hygiene revolution and it took infectious, so, so at the turn of the, 1900, at the 19th century, so infectious disease was way up here. Okay, and by 1943, we're doing a diagram of a, what had happened was infections did this. And they became almost non-existent. And by the way, this is before the first vaccine. So I know a lot of people give vaccines credit for the, for the demise of infectious disease, but actually it was hygiene and it was plumbing. Now, this is a great thing. And so I'm saying this because many of you heard me say that too much hygiene can be a bad thing. Well, here's what we've also seen happen. So if we kind of go over, let's move this over just a little bit too. If we follow this out to today, here's what we've seen. And if this end of the curve, if this is autoimmune disease, here's what we've seen. We've seen autoimmune diseases do this. So we've got like this inverse correlation between being too clean or too dirty. And so too clean um, leads to autoimmune disease, but it's not just being too clean. It's being too clean, but also being exposed to the uh, array and the battery of chemicals, processed food, uh, multitudes of chemicals, etc., in the diet. And then over here, it was bacteria and germs. So again, there's this balance, right? We want to kind of be somewhere in the middle. We don't necessarily want epidemic levels of autoimmunity, but we also don't want epidemic levels of infectious disease. So what's the real answer here? The real answer is to meet it in the middle. Um, and what do I mean by meet it in the middle? You, you, you have to look at hand washing as an example. I've, I've seen some parents that want their kids to wash their hands 10, 15 times a day. I've actually had kids brought into my office their hands were loaded up with atopic inflammation because they washed so much. They scrubbed the oils completely off their skin. And so what that did is it basically it destroyed the health of their skin too clean. They were doing it too much. You can do it too much. You can go overboard. Um, same thing with showers, people taking two showers a day, three showers a day. I have uh, people that have come see me and their, their skin is inflamed and it's because they're bathing in water that's got chlorine and chloramines and bromine and other chemicals in it and fluoride in it. Um, and, and, and they're doing that in the name of thinking that they're cleaner. You can go too far. Remember that there's a microbiome, not just in your gut, but there's a microbiome on your skin. You've got micro, 
You've got bacteria teeming on your skin. And these bacteria are your friends. They're helping you produce uh, agents that help your immune system work and that help your immune system in your skin see and view the outside world and protect your skin from that outside world. And if you cleanse it every single day, you're, you're doing it too much. My advice for most people, I mean, unless you're just working a filthy type of job where you're working like on a farm with hogs and you're scooping hay and you've got hog poop or, or cow poop all over you, like take a shower, wash up. But if you work a desk job in a hyper hygienic environment, there's no need to shower two or three times a day. So you really, you know, you kind of want to, you want to regulate how clean you are based on how dirty your occupation makes you. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.